Hey everybody, welcome back to part three of this wedding. I hope uh, you guys have been anxiously waiting for it. I know that I've taken quite a while getting this out and getting any other video out. You should know I have tons of behind the scenes footage for lots of different weddings and shoots. I just haven't had the time. It just so happens right now that there is some time in the week to work on these now. So I'm gonna start pumping them out. I really want to grow the subscribers and uh, the watch towers and all that. I really want to hear from you guys, to hear what I can do differently, maybe what you guys do that maybe I can learn from. If you learned anything from my videos, uh, let me know. I like to hear that. You should see here, I don't have any behind the scenes footage for this. Normally I would. The reason I don't is because literally I had five minutes to set up and it's hard because most photographers I think would grab their camera and put a flash on it and get going, right? Bounce it. And I did do that, but it's hard for me to just do that because I like consistency and bounce flash is, is not that consistent. It, it is in a way, but not as much as let's say if you put a flash down on a stand, you know that the light is coming from that direction in whatever kind of power you put it in consistently and I like that. So I set up three lights, one to the left, one to the right, and one behind me right there. A question I get asked a lot is where do you know how to set up your lights? And the thing is that you have to be prepare to move them when you need to you do look right there there's one light over there to the left and one to the right uh, of these uh, mariachi but look at this right there look at that light stand and look at where I'm taking the photos from it creates this nice light that I like so that light stand isn't gonna stay in the middle of the dance floor the whole time it's gonna move where I need it to move and this is where having an assistant would help. Uh, I don't know how some photographers do it without an assistant sometimes. I'm not, I don't have an assistant for this wedding, so let's put it that way. I don't know how some of them do it consistently charging like a whole lot of money and not being able to pay an assistant to make their life a little easier by uh, moving the light. The only thing is that I've seen is that they don't use off-camera light the way I use it. They just use bounce flash, which works for them. I just, it doesn't work for me. I like this kind of light. And if you like this kind of light, tell me. If you like just using bounce flash, popping a light on your camera, then you're good to go. Then that works for you, and I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to hear how consistently you can get your shots to be using bounce flash knowing that you can move a little bit and then the light's gonna bounce off a different wall or maybe further along the wall and then the output of the light would be different than if you had it on a stand. I really wanna hear from you. So how much power do I set up the flash for with, right? How, how, how do I use it? Well, to get to that, I first place it where I needed to place it. Look, there's gonna there's the mic right there. That's where the speeches are gonna be. So I get a shot, I put generally pump up the ISO a little bit, and then the shutter speed I can slow it down because it's being frozen by the flash, you know? And then I add flash. So I try to get some ambient exposures to get some of that ambient light, but then add a little bit of light. There's a light you can see it right there. And then there's another light in the middle of the dance floor. That's how I achieve that light. If he were to move, maybe I would have had to move that light stand as well. It just so happens they didn't move. And the reason for that is because, and this is the part that you don't see in uh, some of these behind the scenes uh, videos for other photographers too that I've seen anyways, is that you have to discuss all that stuff with the DJ and with the people giving the speeches, if you tell them you need to stay in this area, then it makes it a whole lot easier for you than having to chase them down. Having said that though, if they're in one area, find angles. Look, that's a, that was a cool little angle there. Find different angles that you can do, you can move to, to get different shots. 
and I know that you don't need that many shots of the speech giver. You know, I, I get that. I tend to overshoot, so I'll get different things, different angles, and you know, to me, that's the way I do it. Some people may be happy with getting three, four, five shots of the speech giver. That's good too. I tend to get like 20, maybe 15, I don't know, somewhere around there. So you can see right to my right, there is that Max Fear on that AD200 from Godox. So I got stuck in this position with my light right basically to my right, which may as well be like on my camera, right? So I want a little depth. So what I'll do at this point is take a few shots. See, look, I'm taking a shot of her, but did you see where my camera, what my light was? That, that wasn't such a great shot. So I moved to this side. Now my flash is opposite of me, but a little bit to the left. Do you see that there? So if I take a shot and it's got the max fear going on, the light disperses to the left, to the right, up, down. It goes everywhere, but I don't have the flash so uh, high, the power so high that it just looks very, very overpowering, I guess you can say. But look, I have it in the middle of her and the middle of them and uh, the couple. So I'm able to get this angle and just move around and get different shots. The original location where I was, where you saw me taking photos of the speech giver right there, it wasn't ideal, but that's why I moved to this side. So now this pre that's created a challenge because now there's a wider, there's a lot of people there, see? But the other guy, the video guy, he's behind them. That was unexpected. So how do we do that? <laughs> I got down a little bit so I can hide his body with their bodies and I and I called him over like get over here <laughs> you need to move so then he got out of my way and I wasn't able to get shot those things you can't plan for because they didn't tell us this was the, the plan you know but you roll with it you move my light stayed in one spot luckily because she stayed in that position even though there was more of them so now I got a few shots of them. Let me come to this side, get some shots of them. There you go. Lighting is still the same. I didn't change the flash power. There, that light is right in the middle of them, the couple, and then the bridesmaids. Super easy uh, setup actually. And it works a lot of the times. Uh, if you have like an irregularly shaped uh, venue space, then you're gonna have to work really uh, hard at it. I actually just shot a wedding at a country club yesterday, yesterday being Sunday. Uh, and uh, yesterday, what was it? The 28th of November. And that one was kind of shaped, kind of strange. So I did get behind the scenes video and eventually I'm gonna finish those photos and be able to edit them. See, look, dances. That light moved. It's not in the middle there. Had I had an assistant, I wouldn't have had to move it myself, and it would have been a whole lot easier, right? But so I moved it. It's right to my right. You can see it right there. Get this nice crisscross light. One is to my right. One is all the way to the left of the screen, and then one is all the way to the back and right of the screen. So I have three flashes. Those back flashes, they're uh, they're not that powerful they have mag grids on them and they're gridded with uh, half CTO gels all the lights are so to try and match the ambient light although these are uh, halls these Armenian uh, halls in LA they tend to have this crazy lighting structure sometimes and this venue is nicer than most because it doesn't necessarily have that light being on their face, although you can see it right there, look, on her dress. Green, blue, red. It's kind of a nightmare to color correct, but if you kind of overpower that light a little bit when this happens, by upping the, plow, the power on your flash, you can counter that crazy light. You don't want people having smurf looking faces, you know? So how exactly do you overpower the existing light? Because earlier I was trying to use the existing light because it wasn't so much on their face. When I see that it's kind of hitting their faces and it's making it purple and blue and stuff, 
that's when you want to overpower it. Luckily, this venue wasn't like other venues that are similar like this, where they have like such overpowering light. It's crazy how much purple and blue and stuff they have on people's faces. So here, there's only some spotlights on them. And so when I do want to overpower the flash, the, the ambient light, you would set your settings as if you were taking the photo without any flash. Put your ISOs down. Put your shutter speed a little higher, maybe one over 200. Close up your aperture. Let less ambient light in. Then set your flash power. For this wedding, I only had to do that a couple times because that light on their face that was blue and purple and red was pretty much under control. But look, the whole setup is the same. One right light to my right, one all the way to the back to the left, one all the way to the right. Those uh, lights that they had set up there, they actually worked in my favor, so I like that. By the way, I'm using the 85mm Sigma Art. Earlier in some videos, you guys heard me talking about which, which lens should I get? The Z85? Look, I stuck with the Sigmas. I love the Sigma so sharp. I love those lenses. And it's a little lighter than my 70-200, although not by that much, to be honest. But uh, one of the things that the 85 did for me, besides the 70 to 200, which if you heard me in previous videos, I love the 70 to 200. But the 85 did force me to do one thing more: is to move around, forward, back, left, right, and be more choosy about my shots. Having the ability to zoom. It kind of makes me an overshooter, and while I still am an overshooter, not as much as before. But then I'm also able to open up the aperture and get more of the ambient light. I really like it. I, I like this lens. So I have the combo 35mm, 85mm on me left and right, and using the whole fast uh, money maker. I, I love that combination of uh, equipment. Throughout this whole sequence here of dancing, dan everything, my, my setup is the same, you guys. All the way to the left, all the way to the right, there's two lights. Then there's one on my light stand that's usually right beside me. This setup for the entirety of this reception worked for the most part. There was only a couple times that I had to change it. So here they're doing this and I'm trying to get these shots and to be honest, it was a little too close for comfort at this point because, you know, COVID is still a thing, right? So, I, I tend to still get it. I still get the shots, but once I get some shots that are closer ups like that, then, you know, I got enough of them and I'll move back. So, I'm moving back now because it was a little too close. Plus, they were starting to bump into me and maybe I was in the way a little bit. So, I'll move. And look, that's perfect. Oh, let me stand on the steps like like Aldemar over there. So I'll stand here, but I'll put my camera down and I'll get my 85 out. Um, and here you go. Start taking some photos. These are nice. It adds a variety of photos. Once you're able to get some 35 millimeter shots and 85 millimeter, it gives you a good range of photos. I'm trying to think of what questions you guys may have, what I can address. If you guys look at these videos, what do you enjoy? Do you enjoy just seeing how other photographers do it, what they're doing? Do you want to hear my technical um, issues? Do you want to hear the settings I have? Do you want to know? What do you want to know? Tell me. I know I can make these videos better if I were to be on camera and put more graphics on the... I just, I'm not looking to do all that because I really am just looking to record what it is I'm already doing for you. I'm already doing for a living and then just kind of putting it on a video for you guys to see and explaining as much as I can throughout the video. But if there's something else that I could explain, ask me or tell me and I will go into it for sure. Same setup here guys, light to my right, light all the way to the back to the left, light all the way to the right to the right. All of them are Godox 8200. All of them are gelled. The ones in the backs are gridded as well, so there's not a whole lot of spill. And I think it looks really nice. Is this the kind of lighting setup that you guys like? I know I 
actually I don't know. I oh <laughs> the lady fell. <laughs> um <laughs> Oh man, she got it though. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, I've seen photographers out there talking about using the ambient light for receptions and I've seen them using it for receptions like this and I'm like, how the hell do you use the ambient light just to take photos? I know these are really great cameras, but they're not magic cameras, right? Even if you put it at 1.4 and your shutter speed is super low, like that's not, uh, that's not the look I go for anyways. You tell me, how, how do you do it? You know, how do you guys do it? Look, I'm using the 85 here. Why am I using the 85 instead of the 35? Why? I could be on the 35 so much easier, right? But I would have to get closer. Whenever I can get further back, I do it. If I can get back, I do it. If I can get back without anybody interrupting me or crossing in front of me, I do it. I like the look of the 85. I like being, for if I can take every photo with an 85, I would, maybe a 50. But you know that's not that's not that's not uh, possible, right? But I just like the look of it, the compression. Uh, I'm probably like at 1.8 right here. If the further back you get, if you put it at 1.8 or 2.0, you know both of those people, those subjects, the bride and groom, are going to be in focus, and I, I like that. Okay, switching gears from the gear <laughs> that I'm using. Let's talk about what it is that you should do as a wedding photographer is go over the timeline with people to be good, right? So we did that, but when there is no coordinator present and you're doing a big wedding like this where Latinos, you know, they party, man, um, stuff is going to run behind and that's exactly what happened for this wedding. So we were an hour behind. Uh, and they added another hour. We stayed there till 11 and instead of 10. So now I switched to my 35 because I wanted to get a little wider. Um, the 85, it would be cool if I had like a second shooter to have them get the 85 and I get uh, some, some wides, but that's not possible. I want to make sure I'm using, I'm getting the right, you know, lens. But look, which, how am I doing this? Oh, that's another thing I should, the video is almost over anyways I don't use continuous focus guys I, I don't use it except for when the subject is walking towards me if they're not walking towards me I will be using the 35 mil I will be using single point out of focus that's what I meant to say so right here I have it on his face and I take the shots I know that those are always going to be sharp because the focus isn't going to go from here to there to here to there I'm using Nikons. I know people will say, but Sony's are so much better. Canons are so much better. Except that I've seen people shoot with Sony's and Canons, and I ask them, so what happened here? Why is their hand in focus, but not their face? These cameras are better than Nikons, I'll give you that. But they're not perfect. Or maybe the new ones are, I don't know. That's something else you guys can talk to me about here. Cause I, I'm a true believer in, I wanna focus I want to use a single point focus because I want to make sure it's in focus where I want it to focus all the time. Single point, recompose. That's the way I did it 10 years ago and I keep doing it. Maybe I'll try that new Canon one day, I don't know what it's called, but I keep hearing how it magically finds focus wherever you want to find focus. And so maybe one day I'll try it and maybe I'll become a believer, but as of for right now, even for this, single point, recompose. Single point right here on the guy, take the shot, recompose. See, that it's just the way I do things, and up until I get to try that new camera, you're not gonna convince me otherwise. Hey guys, subscribe, please, all right? I got more videos coming to you. I just need that encouragement, so thank you.